as you can see, my pattern palette over here is an absolute mess because I really do like patterns. I play with patterns a lot. But for this example, we're going to first create, we're going to create two patterns. We're going to create a simple offset pattern, and then we're going to create a seamless pattern. And I hope under, everyone understands what I mean by that. An offset pattern is just a simple repeating pattern. So we'll make sure the width and height is the same. The demonstration, I'm going to turn off mirror painting. Now I'm going to pick, let's see, what should we, color should we do the pattern on top? Let's do like a, first let's match. I'm going to do a flat pattern, so I'm going to match this color. I'm picking up that color right there with my color sample tool, dropper, same as Photoshop. I'm going to take my paint bucket. I'm going to make sure this is set to current color. I can see it right there. Uh, that's a little bright. Okay, and that's on the canvas. Now I'm going to pick a new layer and I'm going to go back to mirror mode, but this time I'm going to go into kaleidoscope mode. Now, kaleidoscope is a lot like um, those old spirograph tools that we used to play with as kids. It's probably better just demoed, but I'm going to increase the segments to six, and now I'm going to pick a wash brush. The wet, wet wash brush will work fine for what I'm doing. Pick a darker blue. And I, again, I I'm pretty sure this is the default settings for the wash brush. I tend not to mess around with it. And then we're going to make a pretty little flower. I'm going to make it a little white. I love that. I've never tried making a flower with kaleidoscope this way. Oh, I, I'm a flower addict. I make so many flowers, it's ridiculous. Uh, we'll do a little peach here. So now we're done with our pretty little flower, so we can turn off the kaleidoscope tool. And I'm going to hit select all. That step is important because you need to tell Painter the boundaries of your pattern. Now I don't have to hit select all. I could make a square around this uh, if I because it's going to pick up everything that's in this pattern. I'm actually going to drop this down. One thing that you have to remember with patterns is you can only create a pattern from one layer. If I wanted to create a mass pattern, which I'll do in the next step, I would keep that flower on its separate layer, because if I undo that, you'll notice, just like in Photoshop, this flower has transparency behind it. It does not have any paint behind it. So I'm going to drop it down, because we're creating a flat pattern in this step and I'm going to hit select all because I actually do want all this blue space as part of my pattern. And then down here, can you see all of my screen? There's a, let me try to move this up because I don't know if you can see all my screen. But there's a capture pattern button, this little white button right here. So I hit that. I'm going to name it um, yet another flower pattern because I have a lot. I'm going to select the horizontal shift. Now this is what creates a half drop. I'm going to move that to 50%. If I wanted a, it in thirds, I would hit thirds. Now you can see what this does. I know in, in Photoshop you, go, you use the offset filter and you have to have your document and do a lot of math and it used to be so confusing to me. And, but this is simple because you can see it. I might not want 50%, I might want a pattern that has 60 or 70%, so this has a lot of control over your pattern. I'm going to hit OK, and now my pattern will appear, well, it's up here, but I really don't want it here, because as you can see, I have a lot of patterns. So I'm going to drag it down here. There it is, yet another flower pattern. So as you can see, I have a green line around it. That's what tells me that pattern is selected. So I'm going to go back to my um, canvas just so I can show you what the pattern does. I'm going to pick the fill. Now, Painter will automatically, def now, as soon as you're done making a pattern, it's sort of smarter than we are. It goes to source image, but you do need to be on source image to make your pattern. And I'm just going to click in here, and it's going to fill. Now you'll notice it's huge, because I created a really big pattern so you guys could see it. 
But with painter's patterns, you have dynamic control. And I say dynamic because you can change it on the fly, control over the scale of your pattern. I can also change the, uh, how much it offsets up here. Now, you might be saying, who cares? This is important because when I used to use Photoshop for patterns, I used to create patterns at all different sizes or have to scale them up. But now I can do it on the fly, which is really, really important when you're creating patterns. I might want it huge. If I go back to making it a little bit bigger, uh, 117, you probably won't be able to see it, but 73%, now that pattern is big again. 